Record. Got it. Good. We are on. Recording has been started. Not to be serious right out of the gate, um, but what do you guys think about this death of free riding thing uh, that they're talking about in Alliance? So we've got a good panel here, I think. We got Josh, who is our contest rider. Big time contest. He, he's good at that stuff. Trevor, How? he's not so good. But then you got me. <laughs> horrible, a lot. <laughs> horrible at contest. So good contest, not so good. Bad. <laughs> what do you th what do you guys think about the death of free riding? I don't know. I think it can go both ways. I, I saw arguments on both sides, but I know I kinda like what Mr. Joshua Twelker's doing over here. He's uh Mixing up the um, the what do you call it contests with the uh, free riding uh, like style, and he's got a lot of poking, a lot of he focuses a lot on his actual riding and uh, his style, not just laying down hammers. And uh, I think if it goes both ways, uh, man, contests could be really effective as they already are. So, so let's we forgot to introduce ourselves. What kind of hosts are we? Man, the uh, worst. Yourself. I'm Josh Walker. <gasps> I'm Trevor Maurer. And I'm Mike Shren. Josh Twalker, we call him the caveman because he likes to grunt. And prior to shaving his head, he looked like a caveman. Uh, D. Cook, what's up, buddy? Ants, Robin, right on. Okay, let's go for our next, uh, next uh, question. Let's, let's keep going with free riding, actually, because I didn't get to say anything. Yeah. yeah. I kind of like Where's free riding. Where's the free riding? So what I kind of think about free riding is it's kind of a timeless um, part of our sport. You know, sometimes you can do, you know, back when Scott hit the first seven uh, on video and scurfs up, it was a real phenomenal thing um, to happen. But if you look at some of Scott's other tricks back then, they're really timeless. And, uh, you know, a 720, just a straight seven without a grab nowadays is, is kind of plain. But when you look at some of Scott stuff Scott did in a lot of those videos, even today it's still cool. There's stuff he did in magazines. It's timeless. Uh, it doesn't get old no matter how technical our sport gets. And uh, I think that's what I enjoy about free riding is that no matter you know if it's now or five years from now, um, this stuff really looks cool um, no matter how technical wakeboarding gets. So yeah, in other words, free riding is pretty sick. So, I would say we all enjoy it a lot, and uh, we're all shredding and uh, keeping it alive, that's for sure. It, it's hard to, you know, out in the West Coast, obviously a lot of people know, to, to be a good contest rider, and uh, Josh has kind of uh, jumped out of the mold for most of us. Uh, a lot of us aren't very consistent. Uh, we have a lot of fun and do a lot of cool tricks, but the consistency is not there. This guy... Can hit uh, hit his tricks all day, all night, any conditions. Me, not so much. Trevor, occasionally. So, anyways, we got another question. How much do you guys ride the roam? Um, well, it's big for rails. I don't know very many people at all that ride the roam on the wake. I know a couple. Uh, Jason Callen rides it, but. Um, other than that, there's not too many people that ride on the on the wake, but it's a huge rail board, that's for sure. You can press out anything. It has a lot of flex, that's for sure. I think the roam's good, too, for learning your edges and teaching people their first threes. Um, you know, it has a lot of purposes, and, uh, you know, like Trevor said, big on the rails. For sure. Got another question. What are your sponsors? Mike, why don't you kick this one off? All right. Up here, got Kobe in. Uh, Kobe and Sandals, Jet Pilot, and Hyperlite. I got Body Glove, Hyperlite, and uh, oh, I've just been Body Gloved. So I got CWB. So we're uh, and Mom and Mom and Pop. Yeah, Mom and Pop. <laughs> <laughs> Mom and Pop Twalker are kind of all of our sponsors. So definitely. Uh, if you guys need dental work in the Bay Area, Peter Twalker fix you right up. Get on the teeth. Okay. All right, looks like we got another question from Mike here. How long did it take you to become? How flexible are you? <laughs> you are. I'm dyslexic sometimes, guys. So, bear with me. 
Mike, uh, how's your flexibility going? You, he, he's actually working on the splits right now. Believe it or not, he wants to do it. And it's kind of freaking me out a little bit, but he's getting close. How, what do you have to say about this? Okay, so part of the whole free ride thing, uh, when I look at Dogtown and the Z-Boys, uh, and I was talking about timeless stuff, you look at that style of riding, and it, to me it looks cool even though it's 30 plus years past. And so a lot of that com stuff comes from flexibility. And I never thought I'd be able to be riding after 25 years old, and I'm now 26, and more flexible than ever. Uh, put my feet behind my head. Probably shouldn't show you guys that. Like Trevor said, I'm working on doing the splits. So yeah. A lot of times my groins get sore, um, so I figured, you know, the looser you are and the more you can stretch, flexibility, the uh, the safer you'll be wakeboarding. Trevor. Not so much of a stretcher yet. Yeah. Well, I try to stretch, but it hurts, so I kind of stop pretty fast. But, yeah, I do have uh, stretching problems. What about you, Josh? Have I ever seen you stretch? I don't know. I don't think I've stretched <laughs> ever in my lifetime. We Stretching is good, though, but yeah. Mike's kind of the only one that really does it. <laughs> so. Okay, we have uh, some people talking about the room a little bit more. And uh, Trevor read the, the question, but not so much about uh, the Rome in the video. And I have to say, Eric Ruck um, on the Rome in Rewritten was phenomenal. Uh, that guy makes stuff look pretty cool in the, uh, that um, football rail thing he did was... Uh, is that football or soccer? Pretty oh, cool. that's, that's not from Rewritten. That wasn't? Oh, no, that's, that's from... Video. Yes. Different video, guys. Uh, and someone also commented on Josh Storer and Riding the Rome and... Josh Storer, a lot of people don't know, but probably one of the most talented riders I've ever seen, and I don't throw out compliments like that uh, very lightly. Uh, the guy was doing nines out in the Delta when uh, Parks and the rest of the guys were first starting to do nines. No one really uh, you know, knew too much about Josh because he was a real low-key guy and just, just loved to ride, but um, in my opinion, you know, seeing him ride, such a good style, um, but also as a technical rider, and uh, it's a bummer that, you know, He's uh, in the real world doing his uh, his job and uh, probably still riding, but I haven't seen uh, seen Josh for a while. Really good guy. All right, I like this question: big versus style. Stop hitting the table. Oops, I'm hitting the table, guys. I'll stop that. Okay, big versus style. I like this question. I, I kind of think I know uh, Mike's opinion on this one, so I think we should answer each other's on this. What do you think? How well do we know each other, Trevor? Uh, Trevor's not afraid to go big. He's uh, definitely a little crazy. He's still young. Uh, I have a little bit more fear in myself. so I, Yeah, he goes big when he needs to go big, but if not, he likes to save his knees, which is understandable. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm on the same page with Mike over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, man. Kind of sallies. Uh, but like I said, I, my goal is to hopefully be riding when I'm 35, 40 years old. I want to surf mountain bike, snowboard, do all those things when I'm old. And so realistically, the physics of wakeboarding when you go big, uh, I got to imagine catch up to you. So that's kind of my reasoning for uh, trying to do the style thing versus uh, how big you go. And I think I'm coming up on, I don't know how many years. I started wakeboarding when I was 11, now 26. So I've got quite a few years under me. I definitely went big for a few of those years. Have you been riding longer than, you, than Josh has been born? What year were you born? 93. Yeah, I've been wakeboarding longer than this kid's been born. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's a great question. Uh, we got a question. Did any of you guys go to college? And what do we think of collegiate wakeboarding uh, in terms of events and if we've uh, been to any? Well, I've been to college. Uh, I graduated from UCSC with a degree in business management and economics. And then I uh, did my master's in theology. And Trevor, I am currently in college. I'm going to a community college right now, trying to get my AA. And then after that, thinking about going to uh, Sac State and actually going to try to be on their uh, collegiate wakeboard team. So what about you? I'm a sophomore in high school. And, uh, <laughs> I plan on going to college, though. He's a sophomore in high school and kills but it. That's you've been right. to college wakeboard events, correct? Yeah. So what do you think of them? I thought it was... It was a good time and good for the sport, too. Yeah, I think at grassroots anything is, uh, is always solid, and 
Uh, getting into the college level is huge. Uh, I remember going down to the Cable Park in Texas, and they had a huge college scene down there. Uh, you know, high abilities, you know, all the way through beginners, and I think it's uh, definitely great for the sport, and those are the people that are going to be buying boats uh, five, ten years from now. So, uh, <laughs> we got a message from Squid. He'd love to see me ride at 40. And, uh, yeah, Squid is awesome. The guy uh, was there back in the day, and he's still killing it at a, a not-so-young age and uh, making it look good. Yeah, another comment about Randall being 28 and goes huge. I don't know how Randy does it. Randy's a freak. Um, and I think anyone in the sport... Uh, has to give it up to Randy for what he does. Um, not only st he has style and sure. takes it big and stays healthy. And uh, I don't know what uh, his diet is or stretching routine, but I think we can probably learn something from that guy. <laughs> God, <all> time. <laughs> so occasionally, <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a little while since we've had cuddle time. All the coaches at camp get a pretty... little crazy at week 12. Just think about being in your kitchen, just about as big as your kitchen for 12 weeks with like a whole bunch of dudes. It's kind of crazy. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Oh, how come you don't see me at the comps? Uh, I've, I've got a full-time job in the summer plus three other jobs, so... Uh, as much as I'd like to make it to the comps and hang out with all my friends, a lot of times it doesn't happen. Uh, I'm at the Delta every weekend in the winter, though, so if you guys are out in the water, say hi and see you on the docks and stuff. But, uh, yeah, mostly just a time issue. We're going 24-7. We're not coaching people, then we're riding, and uh, not much free time. All right, so here's another question about the why haven't um, more board companies made boards with flex? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I like my board how it is. I ride the Tribute, that one right there with Mike. Mike uh, and Greg Nelson designed that one. Great board, by the way. But uh, that's the way, oops, I hit the desk again. That's the way uh, boards should be. And uh, I don't know. I know Josh Arsenal rides a non-flex yeah. board. And I don't know. Wake boards uh, started with no flex, so... Why don't we stay to our roots? <laughs> well, I I disagree a little bit, but I, I'm not a flex guy, as you know. And the, the biggest thing with flex, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done as far as uh, response. And so the guys that ride them love them and uh, swear by them. And uh, I think normal boards, if you watch closely, have a bit of flex to them as well. Um, and I, in my opinion, uh, stiff board has more response um, you know, when you push the limits, it's gonna it's gonna push back harder than a flex board, and uh, I don't think uh, that means the there shouldn't be more flex boards. I think there just has to be uh, a little bit more in the design phase to make flex boards uh, have better response. But I think there's a lot of things they do offer as well. Hey, I want to give out a shout out to uh, my cousin Brett. What's up, man? <laughs> Is he the one that called you a cutie? What? Is he called you a cutie? No, what? What? It says right there. Yeah. Cute. Uh, he can do that then. So, what's up, Kurt? Anyway. Yeah. I, if you like flex, yeah, I have nothing against it. Oh, better method, Mike or Trevor? Oh, Trevor boy. just learned the method this, <laughs> this year. No, so. I learned it last year. That's okay? one I can, I can probably take on yet. Everything technical, this guy does better. I don't know. I think, improved. hey, all three of us now are doing true methods. So true method, you know, handle with the hand, you know, just like snowboarders would. So we all got that one now. Uh, I Someone says about a covenant being a snowboard for the water. Um, that's what we should be doing. I mean, I, I think all of us snowboard and, uh, we've all grown up, you know, a couple hours from Tahoe. So we definitely, you know, have a lot of the snowboard influence and I agree with the, the, 
theories of flex and snowboarding, but uh, with snowboarding, we're talking using a different surface. It's a completely hard surface you're pushing against, and you have way bigger jumps. With wakeboarding, you have a small jump, and it's a softer surface, so you push, and when you push, your board sinks. And so that's what I'm saying. There needs to be uh, a better balance of response uh, against the water, and so I don't think flex is, is there yet. And uh, I think it, it can be eventually. Hey, Josh, you got a question. What uh, board do you ride, and what do you like about it? I ride the Faction, and I don't know, it's just really poppy. The landings are soft, and I don't know, just my favorite board from CWB. They changed a lot this year for 2010, and they improved it a bunch. Uh, what do we think about the cable park trend? Uh, it's a trend that needs to happen out here. Oh, wait, I have a question. Hey, Mish, why are handle methods lame? I want to know why. Right in, I want to know. Because I think they're pretty <laughs> rad, to be honest. I just have a question. Anyways, we'll move on while you're writing. Cable parks, uh, that's one of the downfalls of living out here. We have nowhere to practice on rails and... Uh, I think, you know, obviously I hope there's cable parks, Northern California, Southern California. Uh, the more parks, the, the more riding time everyone's going to get. And out here, I mean, there's not a weekend that you can't ride unless it's, you know, downpouring. But the Twalkers, man, they're crazy. They're out here every weekend. Uh, just because handle methods just look dim. That's your answer. Oh, uh, okay. That's cool. That's great. I like opinions, too. That's cool. All right. Trevor, where, uh, that, the neon is not in this shirt. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, yeah, Nelson, that's what's up. Handle methods are tight. <laughs> From the ambassador of wakeboarding right there, I mean, he was, man, you got to listen to Nelson on that one. All right. Uh, since, since Nelson's on here, I think we should talk about the history of wakeboarding. Uh, Trevor knows a little, hopefully Josh knows a little, but um, we mentioned on it a, lo a little bit on it earlier, but guys like Nelson, uh, you know, Josh uh, Smith, you know, who's a Delta rider, Scott Byerly, obviously, Eric Schmaltz, there's guys that were riding, you know, 15, 15 years ago that I'll still put that movie in uh, the DVD player all summer long to get pumped off of. And it's not because they're doing a 900 or a 1080. It's really because what they're doing really gets me excited about riding. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, when we ride, it gets other people excited. Oh, no, they're going so fast. Whoa. Okay. Trevor, I want you to, uh, well, I'm trying to read through the next question. A lot of people don't know, but Trevor likes to ride behind jet skis. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor's dad was basically a pro jet skier back in his day, so Trevor's ridden behind some jet skis. Tell us about uh, the 720 behind the jet ski. Yeah, so I went out to um, the sea Man, what was it? It was the sea uh, they're like premiering all their stuff to all the uh, the companies, the magazines. I don't know. It was like a like a before everything was out, but it was for the Sea Dews when they first got their ballast tanks on them. They had me go out and do some uh, riding behind it and whatnot, and we rode for four days behind this jet ski with a ballast on it, and uh, just doing you know your typical tantrum and whatnot. And then all of a sudden, they all just like kind of started wanting me to do a little bit more and more and more and. I don't know how, but I pulled a heel seven off the jet ski wake. <laughs> so we've got a question concerning uh, riding and progression, and, and how long progression should take. And uh, I think a lot of people don't realize it, but there's a huge foundation that needs to be developed in wakeboarding. You know, from edging to uh, you know ollies and figuring out how to get pop, both switch and regular, and so. Uh, a what do you say? Nothing. So I think what normally happens to people is they go out and they jump uh, too fast between the levels, and that's what slows your progression down. If you actually go out and just carve around at a slower speed, 
learn your edges, learn how to ollie from every direction, you're going to really see a quicker progression. And you know, we do it with kids every week. Some of them who have never wakeboarded and they're doing you know 180s by the end of the week, or even you know sometimes 360s. And it all comes from walking slower in the beginning, uh, so you can run faster in the end. And uh, it's kind of hard for some people to go back, uh, but we even made Josh do it last summer when he was trying to get his sevens consistent. Uh, I remember we were towing him around the lake and he was yeah. doing surface drills. Tell, how do you feel about doing that? Yeah, it's helped so much. Uh, like I don't know, I've just progressed so much after Mike's been going through this with me. And but you I, felt like a coot probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, okay, so check this out. So we're riding, right? And this guy over here is doing his Ollie 360s, you know, just trying to no, do... No, he was doing surface Surface slide. 360. I think we were like 15 miles an hour. Some boat comes... Okay, he rides the Pro Junior Men's Tour or whatnot. Some boat comes by, and this guy does like, you know, the big old fashion... Or not the, fa the fashion there. He does a big old Rayleigh right in front of... Uh, Right in front of Josh, and you know, acts all like, "Oh yeah, like <laughs> I'm better than all you guys" type thing. And Josh, and Josh like is so modest that he's just like, you know, just keep the boat slow. I'm just gonna keep on doing my surface spins, <laughs> and just let that guy have his moment, which was pretty cool to watch. Speed bar or double S spin with a grab? Huh? Would you rather see a speed ball or a double S spin with a grab? Hmm. Speedball? I don't know. <laughs> I guess speedball is pretty intense. Speedball was grabbed too, right? Yeah, the Espen's intense too, but like, or double Espen, but I don't know, speedball would be pretty, uh. I yeah, I'm going speedball. Uh, yeah, speedball. Speedball! Throwing, speedball! Up, throwing up for Shapiro. Yeah, we got someone commenting about uh, wakeboarding behind a jet ski in the surf. I've done that one a few times. I broke down in the middle of Monterey Bay in the winter. Almost died. Sold my jet ski. <laughs> and got someone commented about not using fins. I, I fully agree with that. Sometimes There is a benefit to fins, definitely. Um, if you try to go out with them flats and land without fins, it gets uh, pretty temperamental. Uh, you're going to fall a lot more than you'll land stuff. The bigger the fins, the easier you'll land. But... I personally, you know, ride with small motor than fins and nothing else. I used to ride uh, the 3DS without fins. Dave Clark, yeah, definitely. All the parents uh, are way into like wakeboarding and helped all of us out. And I don't think any of us, not one, not one of us, would be here if our parents didn't put out as much as they did. So definitely agree yeah, to that. Yeah, my mom used to tow me around uh, middle of winter at Lake McClure. I remember there's snow on the the shore one time and. She'd be in a sleeping bag driving me in our little ski nautique, so uh, give it up to my mom for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's all about the parents. All right. So, uh, so what are our, all of our favorite grabs? Mike, what's your favorite grab? I, I don't have one. Yeah, I definitely like a lot of grabs. Yeah. <laughs> I think all, uh, pretty much the six basic grabs, anything outside of that is marginal. Sometimes it looks cool. Uh, we really got to make sure it, as much it's, as like, it's got to be pretty legit if it's going to go anywhere else with those six grabs. Yeah. You got to make it your own, make it original, or uh, it's just... Shane, Shane Bonifay with the nuclear word, or nuclear toast at back looks pretty cool. Yeah, he does tweak that one out pretty good, pretty rad. Josh, yours kind of reminds me like that. You two mm -hmm. gauge up pretty good, too. Kind of got the Shane Bonifay uh, toe side back roll going on. I don't know about the Shane Bonifay toe side back roll, but. All right, we got some questions about camp. Um, all right, you know, camp is, I uh, started camp when I was 19, and I've uh, been in business for like eight years now. And our biggest thing, a lot of people come and ask for, you know, secrets to learn certain tricks. And to be honest, uh, you can sometimes get people to learn a trick before they're ready, but it really uh, put the person at a lot of risk. And um, I really admire what Kyle Schmidt's done for wakeboarding and, and uh, encouraging a huge background before you try tricks. And when you do things that the way Kyle has kind of preached for years, I, I think you learn so much faster. And, uh, you know, we have a, a system, uh, not, not the same as Kyle's, but um, we've taught... I don't know, half our camp 360s now, 
I feel just as comfortable teaching a 360 as I do teaching someone to jump the wake. Um, and so, you know, it's all based off uh, fundamentals. And a lot of people don't know a lot of these fundamentals exist. And so what we did is just uh, we have our systems and we make, uh, you know, people go through them whether they like it or not. If Josh came out to camp, we'd make him go through our short system. If he got through it in 10 minutes, then he gets to go to the next thing. But uh, I think that's the secret behind our success. There's no, there's no secrets. Um, you know, it's, it's hard work and fundamentals or frustrations, as my, one of my friends likes to call it. All right. What is the next style? Man, I'll work on it. I'll get back to you on that one because uh, got to keep it fresh. <laughs> With the best thing about wakeboarding being no rules, uh, I don't know if that's true here in California. We have the flag rule, Coast Guard approved vests. Uh, no rails in the water. Yeah, we have lots of rules. A lot of lakes are clockwise. Uh, but the, the fact that everyone can kind of go out and do their own thing, there's a lot of different uh, um, views on how, how wakeboarding should look, and I think that part's great. I definitely, uh, definitely like the question about dancing while you're wakeboarding. You gotta dance while you're yeah, wakeboarding. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah this guy, are. yeah, singing, dancing, doing something. Like, if you're out there just, boom, then you, you gotta liven me up, turn on some, I don't know, Carrie Underwood, <laughs> and just <laughs> rock your life away. Just, yeah, I mean, you gotta dance. If you're not having fun, why wakeboard, right? Uh, we got a question about teaching a 360 online. I uh, would love to do it, uh, but given our small window here, it'd be a little difficult. Um, had to draw diagrams, and it'd probably take a good 15 minutes. And most of the secrets are all in going through the drills, and so it's the process of going through those drills that uh, that really make it, uh, you know, the progression of it. Learn uh, for people to learn it quick. We have uh, another comment about winching, Trevor. You What's ever, up? You ever winched before? Nope. Never. Nah, just kidding. No, we do a lot of winching. Uh, well, probably not the same type of winching that a lot of other people do, though, because I like to uh, find the, uh, you know, about six-inch puddle on the side of the road. Of, of what? Of kind of mixed water and mud. Mud. <laughs> yeah, mostly mud. <laughs> Set up the rails and, uh, you know, just do that thing. But, yeah, you actually, uh, just last week, I, uh, I was at a snowboard contest and got a um, drive the winch and they were riding winch on a snowboard they would ride up to the ramp and then uh, let go of their rope and then hit the rail so that was pretty cool to watch too do you have a a favorite um camper from last summer and and do a story with it i would have to say taz taz, taz. <laughs> <laughs> we had this little kid out there and he was just like he oh. charged on the way for it but yeah it was he, insane i would seriously just love to have him on the boat the whole summer. And uh, should I tell the Too Faced story? Oh, gosh. Heck, yeah. Okay, so Taz likes candy. He almost paid us $30 for this candy bowl that we have sitting on the, the house. But, of course, you can take handfuls for free. Uh, and one night, we take all the campers through. We call it Pirates of the Caribbean through a tunnel with lan you know, a bunch of fire and lanterns and singing crazy, uh, crazy songs. Alyssa is, freaks you out. And we come back and... We kind of keep telling these stories, and Taz falls asleep on the couch, and then wakes up at the end of our stories, and is like, pirates? Pirates? And we're like, what are you talking about? And we convince him that this ne whole thing never happened, and uh, he's kind of dazed out, and, you know, candy boy, we're like, hey, Taz, time to brush your teeth. And Taz's like, this is Thursday, four days of camp. He's like, I didn't bring a toothbrush. And we're like... Oh, great. <laughs> Eight-year-old kid. His parents are going to kill us. So he eating so much. We're like, he ate half the bowl himself. Yeah. Taz, here's some toothpaste. And we, pu we put the toothpaste on his finger, and we kind of look at each other and just know what's going to go down. And Taz, half asleep. <laughs> it was so... <laughs> Swallows. <laughs> it has it all over his mouth, too. It's just like... And on, on up to bed. So uh, that was one of many stories from Taz. So yeah, he's probably uh, one of our favorite campers. We every camper is we got a great story for though. So uh, you know, 
we have a great job and that most of the campers look up to us and don't give us a hard time. So uh, it's a lot like coaching friends. Um, sing a selection of your favorite song. Oh my, my, look on the bright side of life. Tell me everything is all right. Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Ooh. That, was, that right there, American Idol is asking for him now. <laughs> okay, have we heard from Jared Couch? Those of you guys that know Jared Couch, one of our coaches, um, rode for Slingshot, a flex deck company. Uh, he uh, got a job with Apple and turned it down and went to serve our country in the Green Beret. So give it up for all the people that are serving us, making our country safe and um, you know, really those guys don't get enough credit. You know, he's given up a lot to, uh, to, you know, serve us and make sure we have the freedoms to go wakeboard. And, uh, he is at the top of his class, um, and is three points away from getting a perfect score in basic. So, uh, he's killing it. Um, but he's got a long ways to go. So keep your prayers for Jared. Definitely. So the, the company sticker for uh, for yeah. Hyperlight. No, he's thinking the Kobe. Co yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. Uh. So a lot of people ask me, what's the deal with the company sticker on your board? And a lot of you guys might have heard of a company like Flohos. Well, Kobe was the guys that kind of helped get Flohos started, and now they've got their own company. It's been around for 10 years or so out of Southern California, and it's actually a sandal company that was around a lot longer than our, uh, our company company in wakeboarding and they're in the surf industry and um you know it's cool they they're trying to help out some wakeboarders too so yeah sorry about the confusion on that no wally has not attempted the mallard challenge yet i don't think he ever will <laughs> <laughs> if the mallard challenge come to camp you'll find out what do we think about kent water sports i don't know what kent uh kent kent uh is the company that uh, owns most of the companies. Oh. And so I think they've been great. Our sport this year, as you guys probably know, has gone through a huge recession. And without the guys, uh, without Bob Archer, um, who knows where we'd be. You know, he's putting a lot into our, into our sport. And originally when I was younger, I used to think big companies are evil. And now that I'm older, I realize that they're kind of the backbone holding, uh, holding the... Uh, you know, a lot of sport together. <laughs> yes, Josh is in here. Remember what we told you to be <laughs> Caveman. <laughs> Give him a grunt. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, uh, what are we working for in the, uh, in the off season as far as some stuff? Style, We're out of style. As far as style stuff. Um... All three of us are going to be riding. We're already riding a whole bunch together. Mike comes down to the Twelkers um, like every weekend. I come over every weekend. So we're always riding. We're pushing each other. And um, we're trying some new stuff. Uh, a little bit different than other people. Um, but we're not going to. Yeah, a lot of like landing wrapped. But I don't want to say too much because uh, we'll have to release it. We'll, we'll come out with a video or something pretty soon. What's the point of it to hold your what longer? Yes, the whole point of what we're doing now is just to hold a grab longer, like uh, snowboarding, for instance. Like they get to grab their their uh, board all the way around. So we're trying to do stuff more that we can hold our grabs longer and uh, steer stuff out a little bit more. So, Mike, have you talked about the rod cage yet? Hey, have you I talked have... about the rod? <laughs> I'm getting a prop. All right, we're, he's getting a prop right now. So the rod cake is legendary at camp, uh, created by Jared Couch or the rod. And uh, basically the rod cake, imagine a pancake that fits in this pan, you know, about four inches I deep. I can see it. Here. And right, it's up here, it's up here, we're good. Four inches deep and, uh, you know, 12 inches so wide. A full pancake, if you can eat it, you've, you've uh, done the rod challenge. And how many people have eaten one before? I think one, if that. A couple people ate one in the beginning, which is a lot smaller. But D. Cook ate one of the big the <laughs> rod cakes in the beginning. And uh, then the only person I have known to ever eat the rod cake 
in its full size, Rob Jakes. Not only a killer wakeboarder, but he finished the rod kick. Then he puked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got a, a comment about Bob Archer doesn't ride. Uh, no, he doesn't ride to my knowledge. I'm sure he does some recreational boating, uh, but with the amount of work he puts into our industry, it'd be hard to uh, to find the time to ride, I would imagine, and uh, I think he's got a great passion for our sport, um, and uh, he's put people in place that do ride, you know, getting guys like uh, Greg Nelson involved, uh, Greg Dick, guys that, you know, have uh, hours and hours and hours of riding time. Get guys that ride to make the decisions that are important. All right. What's in the middle one? Ooh, that's a hard one. Wet suits or dry suits in the winter? Wet suits or dry suits? Uh, I definitely say dry suits. This it's all about the wet suit. <laughs> Dude, you can't even see anything. Like, if somebody pokes something, you're like, wait, is that a poke? <laughs> wet suits or dry suit, Mike? Uh, I think wet suits more flexible. But, um, and it depends how cold it is, January, February, it's freezing, and sometimes a dry suit allows you to take a couple sets of the day without, you know, completely being freezing, put on an old wetsuit. So unless you got a sponsor that you can have, like, two or three wetsuits, yeah, January, dry suit's pretty nice, but... Yeah. But wetsuits are pretty rad. Wetsuits, you have way more uh, flexibility, and uh, wetsuits are crazy nowadays. I don't even know how they do it. Sometimes it doesn't feel like even wearing something. All right. Oh yeah, Peaches. Peaches also finished a rod cake. I forgot to mention that. Josh, do you have a decent? Josh, do you have a decent crew of kids that shred at uh, your school? Do you have a school? Oh my yeah, school. <laughs> my school. Let's is, talk about. Let's talk about Josh's school. My school is kind of this house right here. This is my fridge where I do my. <laughs> eating in the morning, right after I do my school. <laughs> Pretty much your home school. Yeah. So, I guess you would say, do you have a decent like, amount of guys that ride at your school? This guy right here. This guy right here. And then we got <laughs> Jeremy Twelker over there. Um, also his brother, I guess that would be a rider at your school. Yeah. Yes. Then we have Ash. Ash, what's your last name? We have Ash Pegden. She's a chick rider. She treads tantrums, front rolls. She rides here. I got Wally Anderson. We got a good crew. Everybody just kills it. So, super fun. Uh, okay, we have a request for a rod kick trophy by D. Cook. D. Cook, I understand uh, that you probably deserve one. So I'm gonna go home. I'm pretty good with wood. I'm gonna I'm gonna start creating the rod kick trophies. That might get more kids to uh, to go for it if there's actually something. Uh, Besides uh, just the bragging rights. Trophies coming up. Comment about uh, the sport being better if Nelson was still running double up. I think the more companies that are in the sport, it's always good for the sport. Um, I'm sure, you know, uh, double up, you know, would be a great company. We had a, an awesome team in the last days, and uh, his original team was phenomenal guys that really understood style and so uh yeah and it would be cool if double up was still around but it anyone that knows the wake industry knows that it's you know an amazingly hard industry to break through and uh nelson i think gave it more than a hundred percent and uh you know it was a sick company but i think uh nelson would hate wakeboarding if uh if he is doing that for his whole life because it's uh, a lot of work my first board was a double up. It was the uh, Colin Wright one with the sea monsters on it. That was my first board I bought. So, since we we're talking about a uh, double up, I think uh, one thing that's cool about Nelson designing boards is you talked about uh, you know Bob Archer being a rider, and uh, the one thing that's great having a guy like Nelson in the position that he is, you know, with with Archer's backing. Nelson can go to town, and he's ridden so many years, he understands what works, what doesn't, and he's able to communicate with riders, so riders actually get what they want, and, you know, we have a handful of really good shapers in our industry, but I think it's, uh, Nelson definitely adds uh, a lot of flavor, and uh, he's done a lot with uh, designs that are coming out right now, and uh, he's got, a, you know, some more coming out in the future, so... 
<laughs> when can I apply to your school? <laughs> uh, when can you apply to your guys' school? <laughs> we'll talk to. We'll have to get back to you on that. We gotta talk to uh, mom and pop. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of an exclusive school here at the Talker House. It's uh, it's invite only. I don't know if there has there ever been any applicants. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> and do they have to go through you or your parents? Uh, the my board. Parents. They have to go through the board of members. Tre- Trevor, <laughs> you were just brought in, right? I was. Well, sort of. I, I move in um, December. I'm going to be a Disco Bay Avillian in December. So right now I'm just on the weekends. All right. I like this Mish guy. He's, he's uh, got a lot of interesting points. I like controversial topics. Um, you know, whether Bob Archer doesn't care about the, the wakeboard industry, um, you know, does he watch countless hours of video? You know, maybe not, but the video is there because of Archer's support. And without, without him giving the okay, we wouldn't have a lot of the killer videos that we have today. You know, the budgets are a lot bigger than they were back then. And, uh, you know, he gives the okay. He can, he can say no more videos. You know, we're just going to do this as cheap as possible. But I think he really puts a lot into it. And so, you know, it's, it's uh, debatable, but, um, uh, I like this question right here. Waiting boats. Do you guys like 1,500 pounds, 3,000 pounds, 5,000 pounds? I'm going to be straight up right now. We all ride a lot of no weight just to train and then we'll load up the boat. How much weight do you put in your boat? Uh, 500 sack in the back, 500 up front. We're, we're calculating. Oh, this is on. the home school. This, remember, this is the school right here. <laughs> He's working on math class as we speak. <laughs> and then like... Uh, the boats that we run at camp too, like, like Trevor said, every week we'll at least ride once without weight. And then most of the time we're riding full ballast plus a couple sacks. Uh, it's probably like 3,000 pounds plus some lead. Uh, the 5,000 pounds thing is great if you can afford it. I, I wouldn't mind riding that every day, but I think you also can get a little bit lazy. Uh, s- small wakes help you develop your legs. I'm not sure I understand that one. How are the foundation exercises going? Any changes in the future? The foundation is always changing. And from, you know, six years ago, uh, when we switched from uh, just coaching what people wanted to coach to our own system, uh, they've come a long way. And uh, I think, you know, hopefully they never stop. Um, If we ever become stagnant, we're not progressing any further. And I think there's a, a long ways to go with uh, with coaching and teaching people. So, college tuition thirty grand. Uh, I should go to community college. I spent fourteen dollars a unit for my first two years. Might be a little bit more now, but go to community college, Cabrillo College in Santa Cruz. Great school. If you uh, need a place to go, you can surf. And uh, finish your last two years at the best schools in the country. Then it looks like you can spend even uh, even more money. Trevor, you at community college? Yeah, I'm at community college right now, so uh, it's going good. Who throws the largest air? Randall. Randall. Yeah, Randall. <laughs> Randall. <laughs> All right. Six. Oh, we had a question earlier about people are single. I'm the only one that's married. Shout out to my wife Monica, who's in. Carmel right now. I love you. I'm single. <laughs> Josh is single. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> he is now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you might want to speak up. Maybe you don't. <laughs> I'm not single. Oh, okay. oh there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, video parts coming soon. Uh, not at this moment. Not that I... Are you in any videos coming up? We're all working on photos a lot, photos. though. 
We're uh, working with Rodrigo a lot and Spence, Spence and uh, Cortez and uh, trying to get a lot of photos and stuff like that. So. Oh, number of uh, money of your school. Just curious for Mish, uh, what board and binding setup do you ride? And why Why do you like it? 33 a unit right now. Well, it's, it's doubled. That's ex kind of expensive for community college. Really? I just go. Look at snowboards. They last a long time. I'd beg to differ on snowboards. Uh, I've seen a lot of them snap. Yeah. My cousin used to snap snowboards, uh, probably like three boards a year. And regardless of snapping or not, if uh, you snowboard a bunch, you realize that the cores tend to die. Um, if you want a lively core, you're, you're buying a core just as, uh, I'd say just as fast as you're buying a wakeboard. And wakeboards, if you hit rails or do certain things, they, they last longer or shorter. Snowboards last a long time. We got a. Hopefully, this guy's a pro snowboarder. Uh, Randall number one. I agree. Randall is number one. I think everyone in wakeboarding would agree. Randall is number one. Yeah. Oh, thirty thousand to your school. Oh, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> Patty. <laughs> We're calling Mama. <laughs> See if we get it. 30,000 at Josh's school. That'd be about right for as much riding as you guys do. Uh, worst fall we've seen uh, the last summer at camp. Most of our campers probably don't crash too hard. I mean, quick edges here and there, but not to where you're worried you're going to go to the hospital. Stash. Stash. I'm going to give a, a shout out to Stash if you're watching. Um, I don't, I don't think anybody got hurt this year out at camp. We did a pretty good job of making sure to take step by step, but Stash definitely took a digger and uh, dove in the water. Like we have video of it. His bindings come out. He's in the air in a dive position. And oh, it's pretty rad. Pretty cool video. Okay, we've got a question. Any changes to the tribute um, for next year? Um, no, not for 2010. And at this point, I really don't, uh, personally, that's, it's kind of the style that I like to ride, so uh, I don't have anything that I'd like to change. I kind of grind off the little knobbies at the end, and the uh, only thing I'd like to see is a, a light core, but, um, you know, the light cores for the, the top end board, so I don't think we'll be seeing that. Let's see. Josh, speak up. I agree. Tell us about yourself, Josh. Get closer. What, uh, who's your, uh, your inspiration for wakeboarding? You right here, Mike. Oh, that's a BS answer. <laughs> Who do you like to watch ride and why? Uh, I like to watch Chris Dykeman's, you, Trevor, uh, Ben Greenwood. He's one of my favorite riders to watch, definitely. Okay. Uh, Mike, still riding, uh, still designing boots. Yeah, I, uh, I have a boot fetish, you might call it. And I've always, uh, someone mentioned Mike Rogers uh, a while back, and give a shout out to that guy because he designed a great boot. Hyperlight has some great boots out there. All the companies, I think, have their, their mix of boots. Um, that are good, but I like to always kind of uh, try out different things with boots, and uh, so yeah, I'm definitely still uh, working on boots, and uh, Hyperlite's trying to design a really flexible boot right now, um, along with some other crazy stuff that I don't even know about, because they can't tell us, it's too top secret. Ah, oh, the Covenant. New favorite trick this summer. I'd say a method back five. 
That's pretty rad. That's pretty, that's rad. pretty rad. Was it true method or regular true method? method? True method. I can't do it. That's pretty. That's pretty gnarly though. Grabbing the board with the handle and then passing it. Whew. It's a lot. That's a lot to do. Favorite trick this summer? Uh, I'm gonna brag about Josh for just a second because this guy is doing cab seven, cab heel sevens, toe sevens, switch toe sevens. Uh, how old are you? Sixteen. And when did you learn your first seven? How old were you? Uh, fourteen. Fourteen, yeah. First seven at fourteen. Dude, how do you do that? <laughs> and then Trevor Maurer, uh, my little brother, got to brag on him too. Uh, doing all the nines and sevens. I think every seven. You got a cab heel seven? Yeah. Back, Not, back sevens, toe sevens. I, the only right one here. I don't have is toe side, back sides, and then uh, switch heel side, back side seven. Yeah. These guys are good. Put me to shame. I look like a dork when I ride with him. Style master. Learn everything from him. Yep, OC biting his lip a few years ago on the back roll. Remember that one? Gators crash at camp um, on a Rayleigh. We don't teach many Rayleighs. That's kind of a I weird diet. I've trick. gotten uh, D Town. D Town. And then all the coaches. Call, call, <laughs> Colin Worth and then all the coaches learning Rayleighs. Um, how similar is a tribute to the Pure Ride? Uh, there's definitely a lot of similarities. Uh, the Pure Ride was a shape design way beyond its time, uh, starting with Colin Wright and figuring out the diamond tip stuff, and then uh, Nelson uh, with the channels that had, that thing has on it, um, talking about the Pure Ride. Uh, and then now with uh, the Tribute, I think the Tribute's a lot faster, which is one of the most important things for me. And just the way the uh, channels and the molded fins are set up are huge. And then also for me, having the beveled edge um, it's huge. It just allows you a lot more forgiveness and kind of a smoother, um, buttery type of ride. What boots are you guys riding? Um, I'm riding, right now I'm riding the Murray's and uh, I think I'm going to ride the Audios this next year. Or the Remix, actually. The low line boot. Those are looking pretty cool too. So Right now I'm riding the uh, Answers. Some of the new 2010 CWB stuff looks awesome too. Can no you? way, Mike Rogers is on here. What up, Mike? Yeah. Mike Rogers, I remember the first time I rode with him, blew me away. That guy still does tricks that other, that other people haven't done. Um, you know, that's one thing I admire about riders, that regardless of you know, how technical something is, just being able to do something different. And uh, Rogers, as those that have ridden with him know, uh, you know, is definitely a different style of rider. Uh, that can be appreciated. I, I like this question, the top one. Uh, Josh, how have the foundation exercises helped you out? They've helped me so much this past summer. Like, I just started doing them this past summer, and I haven't had one seven consistent till this summer, and now I've got two at least consistent and back fives, too. So, yeah. And the, the thing is that was hard coaching him through it is, you know, being so consistent on fives like you are, you could do them in your sleep, any contest, and... To have to make you step backwards as hard as a coach, and you, you know, you only have a certain amount of patience with the rider, especially at Josh's caliber. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen you fall in a dumbbell, and to have to go <laughs> spend, you know, that time on such basic stuff is really almost humiliating. Yeah. And you know, I'm glad you stuck with it. Yeah, you really don't realize how much it actually helps until <laughs> a couple months later. Yeah, down, body glow. <laughs> um, I like, <laughs> who's your favorite sibling? <laughs> <laughs> we got Jeremy over there flashing money. Yeah, Daniel Dad wrote Soul Bounds. I think uh, at one point, you know, there's Randy, Wallman, uh, I think Gator, like so many of the top guys were, were all riding Soul Bounds, you know, basically uh, not paid as you'd, you'd call uh, normal sponsorships and riding it for the binding. Uh, 
it's uh, it's interesting to see the the change in bindings since then, and uh, it's cool to see a lot of the bindings come full circle. They were going to all stiff, and now it seems like a lot of the bindings are becoming more flexible, and um, I think it's on the the right uh, the right direction. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. We have a battle of the siblings over here. I want to. I want to hear uh, Dad's input on uh, Misha's riding at the lagoon. Wait, did Dad see Misha ride? Yeah, so it says. I just thought about my ride. Oh, Alyssa Twalker, your sister. Alyssa's not here with us. She's down <laughs> in Carmel. Alyssa, we miss you. We're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa's uh, the cook at camp, and now she works uh, in Carmel as a private chef. So, if you ever uh, want to host a party, give uh, give her a call on Facebook or a te email or whatever you call that. I don't do much Facebooking. Uh, she's the world champion chef, along with a few others. They went to Scotland and uh, won the world championships, kind of like the Iron Chef deal. And we were lucky enough to have her out in the camp uh, boats for a few uh, few months out of the year, and then. Had her up here at the Delta house cooking for us all winter. And the best part about Alyssa is she taught my wife Monica to cook. And Monica feeds me well. All right, Mitch. Sounds like you got some good backing going. Ooh. <laughs> Hey Josh, what's in your fridge? I don't even know right now. Ice cream, I saw ice cream. Cool. Uh, what is it? It's, what's it called? Pecan Parline. Oh, yeah. Pecan, pe <laughs> is it Pecan Parline? Is that yeah, what? Yeah, that's what it is. Pecan Parline, that's where the ice cream's at right there. Praline, my bad. Parline, Praline, same thing. That stuff's good. Get some. Any big changes on the West Coast? Any, any big changes uh, to West Coast camps or Shasta? Uh, not too many changes. I think we're adding that another houseboat. Uh, one of our friends is going to bring his houseboat into the line, so we'll have about 150 feet of houseboat strung up in the cove. And, uh, you know, still got the trampoline. Shasta will be, be the same. Uh, you know, we, we usually generally have coaches for every, you know, two years, and then they move on to the real world, so um, you know maybe a couple new coaches. Um, we've got a, a new coach coming to West Coast camps this winter or this next summer. Uh, can't let it out of the bag yet, though. Water temps on the Delta. Kind of wetsuit, cold. definitely wetsuit. It, it's all snow runoff, so even when it's warmer out, uh, if the snow runoff. Uh, Warm weather melts the snow, and then the snow comes down through the delta, and it uh, it can be kind of cold, where the lakes don't change as much. Don't block the screen. How often do we touch the blockbuster lady? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we really wanted a movie the other night, and the late it was the blockbusters was closed. We really wanted a movie, and uh, yeah, it was uh, an adventure, you know. Just put it that way. Tell us about these. The D Town Boys. <laughs> so, we started up a new thing stand up jet skiing. We all got some. So, uh, we're riding them now and we're going out and just. <laughs> we're, we're those guys. Just put it like that. We're the D Town Boys. Yep. So, if you see us out there standing up, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm not part of some lakes. I'm not part of the jet ski crew. Just to let everyone know, <laughs> we are we're us too, man. Josh, who all's in your gang? How fun is stand up? It's pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie. We're who, all's, who all's in your gang? We got uh, Jeremy Twelker, Wally Anderson, myself, and uh, Josh. And we're trying to get Chris Dykins. Get your ski fixed. Let's go out. Anybody else has a ski? We'll uh, we'll take applications. We'll figure out how big we can get this D-Town dog, boys, whatever we're doing, going. And you guys wear neon, right? Yeah, definitely. Neon wetsuits. They're rad. Neon green, purple. We got neon boats. Our jet skis are like lime green and 
stuff. So. Yeah, we got a comment uh, from Squid about bringing Chad Lowe back. Uh, definitely love Chad Lowe. Every time I go to Florida, um, Chad's usually the first couch I'm crashing on. Him and Ben, uh, good guys, super mellow, and uh, they live in a cool place. So, yeah, Chad, if you ever want to come back, open invite. <gasps> are, are we coming out to Florida this year? Are you, in, Cook, are you in Florida already? Uh, I, I think I'm definitely coming out for a little bit. You guys going to Florida? Uh, I think we're going spring break. Yeah, we're going to go spring break. So that'll be fun. Mike, what do you think about progressive riders staying on the West Coast versus heading to Florida to pursue their pro dreams? I can't really blame anyone for wanting to go to Florida to, uh, to pursue their dreams. Um, but... I think uh, it's cool if you can make it work and uh, stay in the area that you love to ride. And you know, you, to be uh, to be a pro, I think you got to spend a, quite a bit of uh, time in Florida. Never been to Florida, but I'm excited to go for spring break. That's for sure. But you know, we I think we've maintained a lot of our our top riders in California, at least. You know, Ricky and Randall have always been true to the West Coast and. Um, most of the NorCal guys, as far as I know, and uh, Jacob Valdez and Eddie Valdez down south, um, you know, they spend a good amount of time in Florida, but they're true to, to California. So, who is my, who is my favorite in-law? I can't answer that. <laughs> we got a battle between, uh, Daniel and Cook right now about going to Florida. <laughs> That's funny. Any plans to snowboard or surf this winter? Uh, I've always had a season pass to Tahoe, but I don't have one this year. And I think I'm going to be at the Twelkers riding the way forward throughout the winter. So I don't know if the season pass is going to pay for itself this year. And surfing, definitely. I surfed. Uh, we had a big swell last weekend. Got the tail end of that. Got to bring out the gun, the eight foot mini gun. So that was fun. Surfing's always good. And a lot of mountain biking. Mountain biking. Three times a week. Him and one of our other coaches out at camp are going to have a mountain bike race. So yeah. that'll be pretty intense. If anyone wants to come race us, it's going to be later this month. Yeah, Cook did sell out. It's all right, though, Cook. We love you. <laughs> College destroys California wakeboard careers. Yeah. It definitely doesn't help them. <laughs> they really want the feedy PJs. Should I go put them on? Who knows? No, you're not putting the feedy PJs on. <laughs> All right. I can't, Alyssa. They won't let me. You have to do some convincing right now. Sounds like uh, Eddie Valdez has been killing it, riding the new company board. Um, our nickname for Eddie is Ted. So, special Ed, I've heard that one a lot too. Beer Ed named uh, Ed Ted. Oh, uh, maybe Aubrey can join our mountain bike race. Or he could be part of the D Town Boys and get a jet ski. Yo. Take your pick. We're right here. Are you going to bring the Feedy PJs to camp? Dude, are you kidding me? I'm not even gonna have a sleeping bag. You don't need those. All I'm gonna bring is my pillow and my feedy PJs, and I'm good to go. You don't even need a blanket or anything. All right, so I say five minutes, and then we're out. Looks All like right. we're, we're at our hour. You got any special plans for camp next year? Just wakeboard a lot, and one thing Trevor did have this fun. year. This year, Trevor did. Uh, videos for each week of camp. That was pretty cool. I haven't watched mine yet because I'm afraid I'll start crying. Yeah, that was pretty rad. I actually watched one today. And uh, it was pretty cool. The videos are definitely rad. Anyone got any questions about starting a business? Business questions? Business questions. I've been building 
building stuff too. Any construction workers? Business questions? <laughs> My wife loves me. That's a good thing. <laughs> Where do we get the idea for West Coast camps? Uh, I originally wanted to name it either uh, Lost Boys or West Side Soldiers, and my dad put the uh, kibosh on that. I had stickers made up and everything, and uh, figured, uh, you know, he didn't like the name for parents' sake, and I think he was very smart. So, trying to come up with something simple that would uh, would be easy to remember and explain what we were, and. Uh, you know, West Coast, we live on the West Coast, and I, I kind of wanted to leave it open for surf camps and snowboard camps and mountain bike stuff, just because I ha love all those things, and so that's why I kind of picked a name that could accommodate all those. Dow just built a robot? No uh, way. Can it wakeboard? Can the robot wakeboard? <laughs> Take it to market. Uh... Advertise in the magazines. Definitely. <laughs> Mish wants to start a wakeboard company. Any tips? Okay, if you wanna if you wanna make a hundred thousand dollars in wakeboarding, start with a million. That's a good one. And uh, go to your county building, get a DBA, file for a corporation. Definitely talk to Bob too. Why'd you shave your head, Josh? I don't know. Weren't we all going to shave our head on the show? Yeah, but he already went and did it, so I'm not oh, doing it anymore. Like the bull cut. <laughs> 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 I didn't hear about this. Okay, we'll go get the bull on the scissors. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. After this, it's cuddle time with uh, Trevor and Josh. Three more minutes. Three minute countdown. No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. Yeah, that would be pretty funny. No, you can always shave it. Oh. Is man love still an epidemic? I wouldn't. I don't know. Is it man love? Just close bond between brothers, I'd like to call it. Man, man love sounds a little gay. <laughs> I guess cuddle time does kind of insinuate man Yeah, I guess it does, huh? Sorry. I don't know, Mike. The bowl was looking pretty good. What do you think, guys? I, I'm thinking <laughs> we should do it. Give a shout out to, to, to D2 for uh, hitting his first front roll. Do you know D2 hit his front roll? No way. Good job, man. That's sick. I haven't seen you in a long time, man. The wives are making fun of us. <laughs> what music have you been listening to lately? Are you still listening to I like, Camp Jams? I like dub, dub music. Expendables. Went to high school with Expendables. Uh, uh, anything in their uh, their style, I like. I think Bob Archer's married, but uh, so he, he probably isn't gay. All right. So we're going to be out riding tomorrow, right? Yes, we are. Anyone with the Delta, you guys are going to be out. Wave to us tomorrow. Josh will throw something big. <laughs> That's true. He won't let you down. We had some guy like follow us for a while, and Josh was just laying it down. So Wasn't he driving the boat? Yeah, he was driving the boat and, and taking a picture. Chase. Yeah, and chase boat. <laughs> we didn't know this guy, just a random guy, taking pictures from the steering wheel with a fat camera like that big. Just, like, it is crazy. He almost hit the levee a couple times. So, one but, minute to go. You have any any thanks, shout outs? Yeah, I just want to th say thanks to my parents, thanks to the Twalkers, thanks to Mike, thanks to all my sponsors, Body Glove and Hyperlight, and thanks to everybody that's supporting it and supporting me. Yeah, thanks to the parents, thanks for CWB, thanks for this guy putting this show on. It was Maurice. Big shout out to Maurice in New York. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks to the Twalker family, uh, my wife for being supportive of our lifestyle, 
And uh, thanks to all the people, all our sponsors that really, uh, you know, do support us in the industry and, uh, you know, keep producing products and, uh, you know, people that have opinions. Uh, it's always good to have an opinion and to, uh, to question everything. All right. All right. See you guys see later. You. Take it easy. We're out. Bzzz. Bzzz.